Hi, and welcome to this Latino Ministry for Christ channel. Before we proceed to the reflection you have come to see, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel, to activate the bell, to give us a like, to share this video, and to leave your comments. This will allow the algorithms to promote the reflections so that more people may be reached with the gospel. God bless you. In the reflection for today, who do you expect to have your approval from? A young man once studied violin under a world-renowned master. Eventually, the time came for the student's first recital. Following each selection, despite the cheers of the crowd, the performer seemed dissatisfied. Even after the last number, with the shouts louder than ever, the talented violinist stood watching an old man in the balcony. Finally, the elderly one smiled and nodded in approval. Immediately, the young man relaxed and beamed with happiness. You see, the man in the balcony was his teacher, and thus the applause of the crowd that meant nothing to him until he had first won the hearty approval of his master. For the reflection of this day, we will go to the Psalm 90 that tells us, And may the Lord our God show us his approval and make our efforts successful. Yes, make our efforts successful. Psalms 90 verse 17. The question for us today is this, whom are we trying to please? All of our efforts in this life, who are they de destined to please? Is it your friends in society, your co-workers, your neighbors, or your church board? Perhaps we want to look good with those around us, with the members of the clubs to which we belong. We forget that the one we must please to get his approval is the giver of life, God the Father. The things of this world blind us to see the reality. Everything that we as Christians do in this life must be done thinking that our motivation is based on the approval of our Supreme God. Psalm 90 is titled, A Prayer of Moses, the man of God. This is the only song of Moses in the Book of Psalms collection. If we are trying to connect it to a particular time in the life of Moses, the best suggestion is the time described in the Book of Numbers, chapter 20, around the year 1407 before Christ. The historical setting is probably best understood by three major incidents recorded in this chapter. In a single chapter occurs first the death of Miriam, the older sister of Aaron and Moses. Second, the sin of Moses by striking the rock two times in the desert, which prevented him from entering the Promised Land. Many today attribute to the fact that Moses' sin was that God told him to speak to the rock and the rock would give them water. But Moses, upset with the people, struck the rock twice. But something that escapes us to understand is the reason that God himself declares regarding the sin of Moses. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust me enough to demonstrate my holiness to the people of Israel, 
you will not lead them into the land I am giving them. Book of Numbers chapter 20 and verse 12. This is an essential Christian principle that we must keep in mind. And with much more reason, it is addressed to the spiritual leaders of the church. Never take for yourself the attribute of what God works. It doesn't matter what kind of miracle God performs through a minister, an evangelist, a preacher, or a brother. Whether it is a divine healing that water sprouts from a rock, a powerful work, or any other gift that God bestows in His infinite goodness, never, listen to me carefully, never attribute the glory to yourself and do not sanctify and glorify the everlasting God, who is the true author of it. In the phrase, man of God, Moses was peculiarly a man of God and was the man of God, chosen of God, inspired by God, used by God, honored by God, and faithful to God in the midst of His people, well-deserved name given here. But according to the passage, Moses was so tired of the continuous challenges and murmurings of the people that the scripture tells us. Then he and Aaron summoned the people to come and gather at the rock. Listen, you rebels, he shouted. Must we bring you water from this rock? Then Moses raised his hand and struck the rock twice with the staff and water gashed out, so the entire community and their livestock drank their fill. Numbers chapter 20, verses 10 to 11. Unfortunately, annoyed Moses' attitude was, now Aaron and I are going to show you the power we have. And they made water flow from the rock, at no time did they mention God at all, nor did they attribute the miracle to Jehovah. They deemed the glory of God. They did the opposite of God's instruction. Throughout history, ministers and members have fallen for that fault, being used mighty by God and then puffing up and forgetting where those miracles come from because the miracle that water flow from the rock, it was not an action of power of Moses, but the creative and miraculous power of our sovereign God, as it has been and will always be from eternity and to eternity. Third, the other event of great importance in Numbers 20 occurs with the death of Aaron the older brother of Moses. The scripture tells us, the whole community of Israel left Kadesh and arrived at Mount Hor. There on the border of the land of Edom, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, the time has come for Aaron to join his ancestors in death. He will not enter the land I am given the people of Israel because the two of you rebel against my instruction concerning the water at Meribah. Now take Aaron and his son Eleazar up Mount Hor. There you will remove Aaron's priestly garments and put them on Eleazar his son. Aaron will die there and join his ancestors. So Moses did as the Lord commanded. The three of them went up Mount Hor together as the whole community watch, Book of Numbers chapter 30, verse 22 to 27. As suspected, Aaron was also unable to enter the Promised Land. His son was vested by Moses as a priest of the people to enter the Promised Land. Aaron died at top of Mount Hor as God commanded. Once again, allow me to ask you these questions. Who are you trying to please with what you do? Are you trying to please yourself to feel important? Do you do it to feel accepted in your social circle? 
Do you do it out of obligation because it is what you should do to be part of a church? Or do you do it because your greatest desire is to please your God? Do you do it in gratitude for the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary out of love for you and me? That answer is so personal that only you can answer it conscientiously. Your answer will determine the sincere and transparent intentions in your heart. Why do we need God's approval? Excellent question. Someone said, if a child lives with the approval of his parents, he learns to love himself. This is a weighty truth in our relationship with God. You might think that what you need is to feel approved by those around you, by your friends, co-workers, or fellow church members, to feel complete and accomplished. That is the furthest thing from the reality, because the only approval you and I need is God's. If you feel God's approval in your life, with it you will learn to love others in the same way that you will love yourself. The Lord urges to reflect on the fact that our life is finite and short. Our days are numbered in this earth. Believe it or not, we are urged to keep this perspective for the primary reason of serving the Lord better. When we reflect on the speed of our lives, we are more likely to make the most of each day. Also, we are more likely to focus on the eternal matters rather than just the here and now. The amazing thing about life is that it doesn't stop here. Our life on earth may be short, but thanks to Jesus Christ our Savior, we have an eternal paradise with God that awaits us beyond the stars. Oh yes, we have a lot to celebrate, but before we get there, God has called us to do a very specific job here on earth. You have a purpose, a divine calling that only you can fulfill for the kingdom. With that in mind, let us be wise to continually pray for God to bless the work of our hands, to bless our vocation, careers, gifts, and talents. Loving others is one of the most important and difficult commandments that Jesus gave us. We are a messy, needy, and even broken people. We constantly have to deal with our own wounds and the wounds of others. But if we can learn to love others well, our reward will be a rich and life-giving relationship so that you receive the love of God that gives you by His grace, and that you may have the power to love others. In this way, we seek to be approved by our God as faithful children. A pathetic story is told of Professor Herkomer, the famous authority on art. His aged father, who lived with him in his beautiful home in Bushy Haft, England, used to model in clay in his early life. Later, when he had nothing definite to do, he took it again, but his content's fear was that his work would show the marks of imperfection. At night, he would go to rest early, and then his talented son would take up his father's feeble attempts and make the work as beautiful as he well knows how. When the old man came down in the morning, he would go to see the work and say, with evident satisfaction, Ha! Huh, I can do it as well as ever I did. May we not believe that the hands of divine love will thus make beautiful our feeble work for God till it shall bear the light of day and be perfect to all eternity? My dear friend and brother, someone said, I really can't give you the formula for success, but I can give you the formula for failure. It is this, try to please everyone. Pleasing God should be our only goal in this life. 
Nothing and no one can nor should take the place that only the goodness of God deserves. May our works of charity, our displays of love and our aspirations have the sole purpose of pleasing the Lord and His Son, Jesus Christ. Let's focus on that goal. Tomorrow you will find that it was the best decision you could have made. Lord of all goodness, show us the path by which we must walk. Open the way for us to know exactly what your will is and what pleases you. Show us your approval in the works we perform. We thank you for giving us gifts and talents, and we want to do all the good work that you have called us to do. Glory be to you, Lord, creator of heaven and earth. We love you, we praise you, and we bless you in the holy name of Jesus. Amen.